This slide looks at the side effect profile of the two drugs side by side. Both of them can have GI side effects. As mentioned, perfenidone can cause rash or photosensitivity. There's a very small signal of um, myocardial infarcts and bleeding events in patients with nintenanib. Both drugs can cause a, a mild transaminitis and following LFTs is very important for both of these agents. But when one decides between these drugs, one has to weigh the uh, benefits as well as the risks and, ad and potential adverse events. So um, the nice thing about having two antifibrotics is that we have a choice. And typically what I do in my clinical practice is to decide on the, uh, the antifibrotic that is most likely to be uh, uh, well tolerated by the patient. So for example, uh, and I'll give you two extreme examples. If, a, if, one, if I have a patient who likes to play golf six days a week, then probably steer clear of the phenidone. If I have a patient who's on anticoagulation therapy for, for whatever reason, then probably steer clear of nintenanib and direct the patient more to perfenidone. But there is no direct comparison of these two different drugs. Uh, taking all the results together, it does appear that they have um, uh, somewhat uh, equivalent effects on, in treating patients with IPF. I think the important thing is to make an accurate diagnosis and offer the patients the option of going on uh, one of the antifibrotic therapies. Now, one of the things that can happen with IPF is it can be complicated by the development of uh, pulmonary hypertension. And there's a lot of interest in um, looking at some of these PAH medications that have been approved and whether or not they might have any benefit in patients with IPF who develop pulmonary hypertension.